Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, we're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Welcome to another episode of the Geek Home World Podcast. I'm your host, Savage Tech Man, a.k.a. Ed, and welcome back for another wonderful episode. With Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice coming out, we've done some episodes in what we call our Dawn of the League series, and you can check out episode 30, which is based upon Superman. So we're do- dealing with the trinity of superheroes from Batman vs. Superman, which is Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. So this episode will deal with Batman, the Dark Knight, the world's greatest detective. So all you Batman fans out there, I hope this does you justice. And we're just going to talk, first off, about actors who have played Batman And there have been many films, obviously, good and excellent, spectacular and absolutely horrible, Batman and Robin. Um, (laughs) But uh, we're going to start towards the beginning here. Uh, There have been many attempts by several different actors, almost similar to the James Bond franchise, where You know, you get a couple movies in if you're lucky, and then it's on the next actor. But I think Batman has been more tumultuous and more people have played Batman uh, than any other, probably any other franchise out there. We go back to 1943, and there was this serial that they used to show in movie theaters when everything was probably a nickel. You know, you could get your Coca-Cola popcorn and for a quarter and go see a movie uh, serial. And they had a 15-chapter serial with Lewis Wilson playing Batman and Douglas Croft playing Robin. And it was simply called Batman. And that was in 1943. Then we go forward to Batman and Robin from 1945, which was also... A 15-chapter serial. This time it starred Robert Lowry as Batman and Johnny Duncan as Robin. The boy wonder. The wonderful sidekick. Then we get, um, in 1966, probably one of my most famous incarnations of Batman. And yes, it's very campy. It was a revitalization of Batman, but we got Batman the movie, the feature film based on the Batman television series that starred, brilliantly starred, Adam West as Batman and Burt Ward as Robin. Of course, you had Cesar Romero is probably being one of the best Jokers ever. You had Burgess Meredith as the Penguin. You had Frank Gorshin as the Riddler and Lee Merriweather as Catwoman on there. So that was uh, wonderful on that. And... um, the the television show Batman I grew up watching and to see it in all that I guess Technicolor was it I'm not sure if that's the official term of it but just seeing it in all that campiness and fun you know when I was a little kid growing up that was that was my Batman you know like when I grew up later Christopher Christopher Reeve was my Superman you know but I'm willing to change with the times and all that and but I I still have a place in my heart for the Batman series from 1966 with Adam West. Now, um one of my favorite Batmobiles was that that was probably my favorite Batmobile from the Batman television series from 1966. And um I would probably say my second favorite Batmobile was probably from 1989 Batman movie with Michael Keaton. Um, 
Now, when we go um, through time, that's actually the next movie in, in the line if we're talking about strictly movies, okay? Because you had Batman the movie feature film, and it uh, spun off of the TV series there, and and it was directed by Tim Burton, and it starred Michael Keaton as Batman, Jack Nicholson as the Joker, and Kim Basinger yelling and screaming all the time as Vicki Vale. And uh, there's a wonderful Honest Trailers, if you haven't seen it, on uh, the 1989 Batman by Tim Burton. It's hilarious. And... uh, (laughs) But uh, that movie has a special place in my heart, too, because that was one of my favorite Batman movies, and uh, for a lot of people it was. And before you know, we got into the hyper-realism now that we have with Batman, that was the Batman of the time. And you have to realize that's 1989, so if you live during the 80s, and not just being retro now as it's... You know, the 80s are still popular and coming back like they always do. But that was a very bright, shiny time in media. And this Batman, directed by Tim Burton, was dark for that time. Now, looking back, you see Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the Joker is reminiscent of Cesar Romero's Joker, in a way. Even though that one's even more campy, but... But Jack Nicholson played it can't be that way. Now, people may not realize that how dark that movie was for the time. And then Batman Returns in 1992, which also starred Michael Keaton and um, had Michelle Pfeiffer, who brilliantly, I think, did one of the greatest versions of Catwoman. Uh, Danny DeVito was wonderful as the Penguin. I just remember how scary he was. And then Christopher Walken. Now, come on now. Christopher Walken plays a great bad guy. He played Max Shrek in the 1992 Batman Returns, okay? But if you think about this, both of those films, directed by Tim Burton, were very dark, and they were very dark for that time. But now, looking back, they don't seem as dark, you know, we've... we've <laughs> evolved or whatever moved more towards the dark side um of things and and the cinematic versions of batman um then we kind of flash forward to the next movie on the big screen which was batman forever uh directed by joel schumacher and it starred val kilmer's batman and it had chris o'donnell come on as robin the first time we saw him on the big screen Nicole Kidman was Chase Meridian, who was Bruce Wayne's love interest slash psychiatrist. Tommy Lee Jones is Two-Faced. And Jim Carrey as a wonderful version of the Riddler. I, I think he's as close as we would ever get to Frank Gorshin's Riddler. And a lot, you can see that I hold a lot of these later incarnations up to the Batman TV series and Batman, the movie, you know, that ran in the late sixties there because those were just quintessential versions yet campy, but quintessential versions of some of Batman's greatest foes. And, um, what was interesting about Batman forever from 1995 was, uh, what was the first Joel Schumacher movie and, a lot of people forget that Val Kilmer was even... They forget about Batman Forever. It was not a bad movie. It was. It was. It started to be very campy. It definitely was different than the Tim... The two previous Tim Burton films. But... It was very kind of introspective in a way. Especially Chase Meridian, Nicole Kidman's character. And how Bruce was delving into his psyche there. And, and some of the reports I read was how Schumacher and Kilmer could not get along, that Kilmer was kind of bratty for the role. And there were a lot of good actors that passed on the role of Batman that maybe later regretted it, but had they been in this movie, they probably wouldn't have regretted (laughs) not being in it and all. But it was an interesting take on Batman. And, And I remember at the time saying, Val Kilmer, really? 
from the Lost Boys, <laughs> which is a classic. Probably one of his best movies, Val Kilmer's movie there. Um, but then we go forward to the movie that pretty much everyone had to apologize. The actors and the director had to apologize for it got it was so campy and it was just um probably one of the worst superhero movies ever i watched it i watched it on tv rewatched it several times because it's batman but from 1997 the infamous batman and robin directed once again by joel schumacher who pretty much destroyed the franchise at that point it starts george clooney as batman Chris O'Donnell as Robin, once again, and had Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, and Robert Swinson as Bane. Now, the big thing of this movie is, well, bat nipples. (laughs) That was one of the takeaways from the movie. Uh, Batman all of a sudden had bat nipples. Um, It was terrible. George Clooney now... I said for a lot of years until I met, until I met, listen to me, until I saw Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, I said if, and I still may say this a little bit, if Bruce Wayne were an actual living person in this day and time, whose lifestyle would an actor, a real life actor, be? If I had to say, okay, this actor is a real life Bruce Wayne. George Clooney. I thought at the time that was perfect casting. And and, and there's probably some bad fights out there, whatever Batman fans are called these days, um, but would just wince at me saying that. But let me explain before you, you chop off my bat wings here. Um, but George Clooney kind of is that playboy, or at least he was before he kind of settled down and got married. But George Clooney was kind of that well, not billionaire, but he was probably more the millionaire playboy. You know, you'd see him all over with all these models all over the world hanging out, and that's that's so Bruce Wayne, and um, that's the thing about it. Um, I think that George Clooney is more of a real-life Bruce Wayne than he is Batman, obviously. Now... We'll go forward in time to our new newest Batman, and, I, and I'll let you know in a minute how I feel about our newest Batman, and I'll tie it into this. But I remember Alicia Silverstone from Clueless. Wasn't she in Clueless? I believe so. Um, I just remember her as Batgirl being kind of hot, you know. And I love the... Um, was it Yvonne DiCarlo from the 1960s... Batman TV series, who was Batgirl. I, I thought she was awesome as Batgirl. I just loved her little bat cycle and all that. And, you know, when they brought her into the show to bring in, bring up ratings and such. And, and, um, but some of the worst things in the movie, and I am still a fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't care what he's gone through. People pooped on all over, um, Terminator Genesis. I thought it was next to Terminator 2. I thought it was one of the best Terminator movies. There I said it. And, um, but anyway, Arnold Schwarzenegger had <laughs> the worst cliche script ever in a, a movie. He's like, freeze, chill, because he was playing Mr. Freeze, you know, um, Save the girl or save the bat boy or whatever, whatever it was. I, I can't remember the exact quote now. I try to put Batman and Robin out of my mind. I was never terribly impressed with the brilliance of of um, Harvey Two Face in this one. Um, you know, the actor was was beyond um, great things. Oh, that excuse me, that was in Batman Forever. Tommy Lee Jones. I, I skipped backwards there. Uh, but I did want to say, as as Harvey Two Face or just Two Face in the movie, I thought Tommy Lee Jones was really wasted, and that was in Batman Forever. But uh, back to Batman and Robin, uh, Uma Thurman was smoking hot as Poison Ivy, but one of the worst incarnations of Bane was Robert Swenson. Not blaming him necessarily, but 
Bane that everybody wanted to see on, you know, the big screen and all who, you know, broke Batman's back and all that stuff, which later on um, we saw cinematically in the movies. Well, this Bane was just just senseless. And, and really, so Batman and Robin, Joel Schumacher came back later on, apologized for it. George Clooney, it was one of his... This is when he was really taking off in his career. And so this was one of his highlights, supposedly, at the time to get the role of Batman. There was a lot. These were a lot of A-list names at the time in 1997. But you can't take a horrible script and and just a worse co- incarnation of Batman and Robin and make it work. And all, these, all those salaries involved with this movie... They certainly didn't, they might have spent it on talent, but they didn't spend it on good writers because Batman and Robin from 1997 pretty much ended the Batman on big screen. So then we have to wait and wait and wait till 2005 when Christopher Nolan, who's now the godfather of Batman, you know, the, the his Batman trilogy, plus overseeing parts of... Um, Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice and kind of in an executive producer role or con- consultant I suppose to an extent um, but in 2005 Batman Begins directed by Christopher Nolan starred Christian Bale as I'm Batman that was a big thing you know we, we thought poor Batman at this point in his life he must have throat cancer but Give him kudos for going out there and and fighting crime with that terrible voice. You know, I wanted to give him some lozenges, something to help him out, some throat spray, anything. But uh, Christian Bale just kind of overacted the role. But I will say the the they call it now the Dark Knight trilogy, but the Dark Knight trilogy of Batman Begins, the Dark Knight, and the Dark Knight Rises were brilliant, and they took. Batman back to basics and I know I mentioned James Bond earlier and I've always kind of thought about this but when we got our you know before Skyfall and all that and we in Quantum of Solace and we started with Casino Royale and and the newer movie um but um just how Bat- Batman begins rebooted the franchise and it was basically like Batman starting out, it was Batman starting out, Batman Begins, hence the title. They did the same thing with the James Bond um, series, and um, we're about to see, and probably the next Bond will be a new, newer Bond, and we'll see where we go from there. But those those two franchises seem to kind of coincide. Um so Batman Begins with Christopher Nolan had Christian Bale as Batman. You had Michael Caine as Alfred Pennyworth, and you can't go wrong with Michael Caine. What a brilliant actor. Gary Oldman as James Gordon. Brilliant, brilliant. Katie Holmes as Rachel Dawes, who I think at the time was married to Tom Cruise or almost on the ins or outs. And then, um,. Then uh, she gets replaced in the next movie, her character. Uh, we had Liam, the great Liam Neeson as Henry Ducar or Ra's al Ghul. Cillian Murphy, who was originally considered at one time to play Batman, but um, we, I think we were better off with Christian Bale, but he ended up getting the role of Scarecrow. And then the most wonderful Morgan Freeman playing Lucius Fox. I mean, A plus on pretty much everybody in that list there um, for for actors in Batman Begins in two thousand five. Um, and and yes, it was they had a little bit of the gadgets and and kind of like Bond, you know, Bond straight was more visceral. It was less gadget gadgety and all that um but it was an interesting one the league of shadows showed up here in batman begins from 2005 then we go forward to the best and not just the best batman movie ever 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 but 
a movie that was so good, so well written, so well directed, that such a great movie that it transcended comic book adaptations of movies, okay? The Dark Knight. And the fact that it was so good, the sequel to it was called The Dark Knight Rises. Now, so we're at 2008. Same year I started really podcasting. <laughs> so, um, no correlation, but I did always used to quote the Joker in this. And, and you know, in, in one of my previous podcasts, I'd always use that as a sign-off or something. Uh, or actually a sign-on, I guess it would be. I was like, we are tonight's entertainment and anyhow, um, we had The Dark Knight directed by Christopher Nolan. Once again, it starred Christian Bale as Batman, Michael Caine as Alfred Pennyworth again, Gary Oldman came back to play James Gordon, Maggie Gyllenhaal was Rachel Dawes, she replaced Katie Holmes, okay? Then we had the wonderful Aaron Eckhart, who went on to some other movies, and and a brilliant actor, very good range on him um, as an actor. But he played Harvey Dent in Two Face, and I'm sorry to um, look at comparison to other people, but when you compare Tommy Lee Jones' version of Two Face which Tommy Lee Jones had the range to play it. It was just a crappy script, and he never got along with Jim Carrey. I understand he found him annoying, and I could see that, but Jim Carrey was brilliant in that movie, uh, Batman Forever. But when you compare the two the two, two faces, <laughs> uh, Aaron Eckhart just owns that role of, of Harvey Dent and Two-Face because, you know, that famous line... Either you 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 die the hero or you hang around long enough to become the bad guy. I know I didn't quote it right. I, forgive me. And uh, I'm ashamed I don't remember that. I should. Um, but The Dark Knight still holds up. Batman vs. Superman has a whole sequence in it that, to me, was lifted right from a portion of The Dark Knight uh, from 2008. But... Maggie Gyllenhaal as Rachel Dawes, she was more, I think she was a better actress in that part, and, and, and it was a, a better script, it, it was just, it was a brilliant movie, uh, the the best, still the best incarnation of Batman on film, um, of course, Heath Ledger as the Joker, um, uh, you know, we talk about Jack Nicholson, is his Joker better, is Heath Ledger is better, uh, will Jared Leto's Joker from Suicide Squad that's coming out soon, will that be a better um, Joker? They're all different. you got to look at them in the time frame they were made, how they were acted, et cetera, et cetera. But honestly, Heath Ledger, I, I, can, I can live in a world where Heath Ledger's Joker exists and Jack Nicholson's joker exist and basically it is jack nicholson just being jack nicholson and and you know what that's good enough for me um jack nicholson is still a brilliant actor is so much that he's done he's just brilliant but heath ledger is the joker so many quotable things i you know not to plug my old podcast the quotables ha 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 shameless plug but i got so many quotes from this movie and i'm a person that loves quotes and Heath Ledger is the Joker, just, you know, let's put a smile on that face. I mean, I was so hyped up for this movie, and it did deliver. And it could have been two more hours longer, and I still would have just thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox was kind of like that conscience, also with Alfred. They kept Batman slash Bruce Wayne, because he was really Batman, you find out. You know, the persona with him, with Superman... You know, he's he's basically Clark Kent and Superman's the persona. This one, it's the opposite. You know, Batman is really who Bruce Wayne is, and Bruce Wayne is really the cover story, you know, it's and all that. So we have that, um, The Dark Knight from 2008. And then 2012, we have The Dark Knight Rises once again, and this fulfills the Nolan trilogy of The Dark Knight. 
And he directed this again. It also had Christian Bale as Batman. Michael Caine came back as Alfred Pennyworth. Gary Oldman brilliantly as James Gordon. Anne Hathaway came in as Selena Kyle. And uh, she was a good actress in there. She didn't wear any Prada that I'm aware of. Ha, ha, ha. But uh, we had Jason Gordon. Joseph. I always say Jason. Not Jason Todd. Uh, totally different. Uh Joseph Gordon-Levitt as John Blake, Tom Hardy as Bane, Bane done right for a change, and um, Marion Cotillard as Miranda Tate, Miranda Tate or Talia Al Ghul, which was an interesting turn in there, and of course the brilliant Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox. So... I had a few problems with this movie. Of course, this movie came out in 2012, The Dark Knight Rises, and there was no way to top The Dark Knight. It's almost like... I think of the Terminator series, the original Terminator series, the Terminator, and then Terminator 2, Judgment Day. You have Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. Okay? After Terminator 2, Judgment Day, and after The Dark Knight, it's almost impossible to do another movie and James Cameron never did another Terminator movie which was probably the wisest thing though we'd love to see him come back take over the franchise and make a Terminator 3 but he considered that the end of the story and I respect that still the best Terminator movie Um, but The Dark Knight Rises very good Batman movie a good way to end it things um it could go either way on some of these things, but but the deal about that is it still couldn't top The Dark Knight. And, and, and Christopher Nolan, I think, did the best job he could, and he gave us a good, solid Batman movie and a good, solid movie to end the trilogy and all that. And poor Christian Bale, you know, after that he got the rest of his voice, and, and he hasn't done much since. <laughs> That's been as big as, as The Dark Knight. Uh, no hate towards uh, Christian Bale, because he's a great actor, especially American Psycho. Um, If you haven't seen that, you should check that out. That's from way back in the day. So, The Dark Knight Rises finishes that trilogy. Then we go forward to 2016, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Now, Ben Affleck, in real life, and I'm tying it back into earlier, could be a real-life Bruce Wayne. He really could. I, I thought... It was a solid movie. And to the critics out there, you can l- listen to our last episode, uh, I think Critical Injustice, and, and basically we're talk- I'm talking about the critics and how they sabotaged Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice before it even got off, off the ground. And it's now made about $800 million worldwide, about $250, $290, actually, excuse me, close to $300 million um, domestic. Um and it's not doing so well here. I mean, that is good. A movie that costs $200 million and then $400 million to market. So they had to make roughly about $800 million, the studio said, to break even. So they're going to break even, thank the Lord, for that one. But Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, you should go see it. You should be supporting this movie. It's very gripping. It's, it's very brilliant. Much better than Man of Steel. And uh, we said that on a previous episode. Um but um, we have Ben Affleck playing Batman and Henry Cavill reprising his role as Superman. We have Gal Gadot, wonderful in this movie as 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 Wonder Woman. She kicks butt. Um, so that's our on on TV slash, but mainly um, on the main screen on on the big screen that really matters are incarnations of Batman, and there's more to come. I'll have to blog some on some of the other incarnations that we saw, like the DC cartoons, which were brilliant, are brilliant, and um, we're going to see The Killing Joke coming out very soon on DVD, Blu-ray, the stream, and all that, and looking very much forward to that. Um what do I want to see in Batman movies? I want to see more detective work. He is the world's greatest detective. I want to see more of that. I want to see more gadgets, but I don't want it to be too campy. And I just want to see more of what makes Batman great. So 
Whatever your thoughts are on, let us know here at Geek Home World. Uh, hit us up on Twitter, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, don't forget to check out um, in our Dawn of League series, uh, episode 30 on Superman. And coming soon, we'll have our Dawn of the League series will conclude with Wonder Woman. So something to look forward to, girl power. And Wonder Woman kicks total butt. It, she almost steals the movie in Batman vs. Superman. So go out there, go see the movie. Don't listen to the critics. You like what you like, and let us know what you think. All right, thanks. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Geek Homeworld Podcast with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes, see us on YouTube, be part of our Mixler chats. Thank you. See you again on the Geek Homeworld Podcast. Geek Homeworld.